Hi everybody, I'll be from Agape Life Ministries. I have a message today which is entitled, Taking Up Your God-Given Authority. I had a revelation uh, lately, I have had an encounter with the Lord and He took me into the heavenly places and I found myself seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ in heavenly places. And the Lord said to me, I want you to look around and see where you are and what you look like. So I saw myself with a crown on my head, with a scepter in my hand, but I was like a little girl. And the Lord very gently and graciously admonished me and he said to me, it is time that you take up your authority in the full responsibility that I've given you. So let's just look at this. Uh, I just want, don't want to miss anything. And he says to grow up in maturity in Christ, exercising what you know. <laughs> so we, most of us know what our identity is in Christ. We know that in Christ we are more than conquerors. In Christ we have the authority of his name. In Christ, we are um, above all principalities and powers and dominions. I want to read that to you and lay a foundation here that we can see what the Word of God is saying. See, in Ephesians 1, the verse from the 17, he talks about giving us enlightened eyes of our understanding. And I've been praying this very very much for quite some time the more you pray for enlightened eyes of understanding the more you're gonna see and understand so he says here in verse 19 and that we would know um, what is the power towards us his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power uh, that is the energeo, the working, and the mighty power is Kratos, by which, uh, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now, I want you to take note. He set Christ there. And then let's go to Ephesians um, 2 verse 6. He raised him up by the Holy Spirit and he put him there. Then he said in 2 verse 6, he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now back to Ephesians 1 verse 21, he says, Far above all principality and power and might and dominion uh, and every name that is named, sickness and disease and poverty and all this stuff. Not only is in this world, but also in that which is to come. But not only in this world means that it is now and in the world to come. He has given us dominion. He's given us power and authority. <laughs> and that power is dunamis. And then according to the working of his power, as the authority that comes in there through the Holy Spirit's working in us. And you know, we know these things. We know that we have received the keys of the kingdom, that we can bind the enemy. We can loose God's goodness. We can loose ourselves from the grip of the enemy. And he says, use these kingdom keys. I'm giving it to you. But I find that many of us, in some cases we're victorious, in other cases we allow the enemy to sneak in on us. You know, one thing starts breaking and we say, oh, 
because of this, you know, the, I, I've lost a lot of money through this thing which was broken and had to be replaced. So you don't take authority. Then the second thing comes. And all of a sudden you say, it never rains but it pours. So we come in agreement with an enemy instead of rising up in agreement with God's word. So what is so amazing is that in the secret place of his presence there where we seated together with Christ, born again, redeemed from the curse, in his righteousness, growing up as mature sons and daughters of the Most High, into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, we start exercising this dominion by the power of his name. And we say, no, enemy, you under my feet. Everything that you steal from me, you have to give back sevenfold. And this is a season of divine recovery. Everything that was stolen from us, everything that we've lost, missing opportunities, missing um, where money was taken from us, where we've um, not gone through the open doors God has given us because we were not awake and watchful and in tune with the Lord. Those things we can claim back and say, no, no more. This is the time to rise up in your authority because the glory of God is risen upon you. And in that glory we reign together with Christ. We are kings and priests unto our God. Um, Revelation 1 verse 6 and 5 verse 10. Listen to what it says in Revelation 5 verse 10. I love this. He says, He has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now you can say, okay, maybe that's later. No, we reign right now by the word of the Lord. And this comes out of a place of humility. Remember, in ourselves, we can do nothing. We have nothing, we are nothing without Christ. But in Christ, that's our identity. We rule, we reign, we take authority, and we exercise dominion over the enemy, over principalities and powers and every name that is named. So now, when I come to the Lord about a situation, I say, Lord, what is going on here? I worship you. Speak to me. In that place, seated together with Christ in heavenly places, I can hear his voice. I can see his face. I can see what God is doing. And lately, this is in my uh, dreams God is talking to me so much he shows me things about which I pray he gives me strategy he shows me the situation in people's hearts and in their um, attitudes he shows it to me in a dream and then it manifests because he has to be able to trust us that we will not use this information in a negative way but to bring his kingdom it's all about the kingdom of God being established on this earth. And in Christ, this is open. There's an open portal in Christ. He is the door. He is our ascension. We ascend into the spirit in Christ. So the, the veil has been rent. There's no veil. You know when there are veils? The veil is when we live under the law. And that's in 2 Corinthians 3. It says, when the heart is turned to the Lord, the veils are lifted. The veil is taken away. We cannot live under the law of you should and you shouldn't. We have to live from the word of God. Jesus says, I live from every word that comes from my father's mouth. Now we're in Christ. Are we living from every word that comes from our father's mouth. Jesus goes on to say in um, John 5 verse 19, he says, uh, only 
do what I see my father's doing. And then he also says, I only say what I hear my father is saying. So we have the Holy Spirit who shows us things, who speaks into our ear. And when we are tuned to what the Holy Spirit is doing, tuned to see what the Father is doing, asking him to show us. That's, I've to uh, talked about that so much. But the key of asking, ask, it shall be given to you. In America we ask, in South Africa we ask, but it's the same thing. Ask, it shall be given to you. Seek, you will find. Knock, it shall be opened. God is looking at our hearts, the degree of our pursuit of him, his will, his kingdom, dominion. So we're ambassadors of Christ. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.20 says we are now ambassadors of the kingdom. So when I represent the kingdom of God here on the earth, I say let it be Father as it is in heaven in this situation. So what is your word in heaven on the situation? Or am I going to be bogged down by what the enemy is doing and saying and the situation I see in the natural. You see, when I do that, I get under the circumstances. And God wants me to reign over it. The only way I can reign is to take my eyes off. And he says in Hebrews 12, the weight, the loads of my burdens, take it off. And also the sin that so easily, easily encompass us. And fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. To say, Lord, my eyes are on you. What are you saying? So I want to encourage you today to come into the presence. I want to say to you, this has become so real to me, that when my mind is full of negativity, of the situations that are happening around me. I cannot hear God. Many people say, I can't hear God's voice. Well, then you've just spoken over yourself what you don't want. I do hear his voice because I'm one of his sheep. If you're born again, you are in the sheepfold and he says, my sheep hear my voice. So now with a knowing that he wants to speak to me, he wants to give me the strategy, the word that can shift the situation into kingdom alignment. Now, when you hear a word from the prophet, or you want to hear a word from the Lord, you go and you get quiet. You see, because when my mind is all busy, the static interferes with the frequency of heaven I cannot hear I cannot see but the moment I give it all to the Lord I just hand it over it's like, okay Lord take my hands off I just wait on you I worship you and I wait on you to speak to me into this uh, situation and the moment I get the word of the Lord and it can come through another prophet it can come in so many ways but let's take for instance the word that the Lord recently gave me about turnaround. For those who haven't seen it, you can find it on YouTube. Divine turnaround. If you look at the current status of a negative situation and you take the word of God, because it comes from his throne room, and you take that prophetic word and you say, now I'm not going to look at what I see. I am going to release the kingdom over the situation. I released divine turnaround over my finances. That was part of that prophetic word. That everything that's in the negative, <clears throat> God wants to turn around by his divine power. But it's in the mouth. This is the sword. The scepter with which you reign is the kingdom authority. But the sword is the word in your mouth. So when you take that word and you start praising God with a word, I want to read to you a, a powerful scripture. See, we have to start letting the Lord teach our hands to war. He says here in um, 
And many of you know this, like I know it, but I'm not always exercising it. And God took me to task about it. Um, he says, um, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. So I praise him with his own word. That is the sword. That's the sword of the spirit and part of our armor, by the way. Uh, to execute vengeance, so vengeance on the heathen and punishments on the people, to bind the kings with chains. Which kings is he talking about here? It's the, the kings of the kingdom of darkness and their nobles with fetters of iron. That is our kingdom keys to execute upon them the judgment written. What is that judgment written? It is that Jesus reigns. He reigns over every situation with his word. And I'm just speaking that word. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. So you have the honor. If you walk in holiness, if you walk in righteousness, you have the honor to take the word of the Lord in your mouth and to start releasing it in kingdom authority because you know your identity is in Christ Jesus. Your positioning is in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father. Together with Christ, we rule and reign as kings unto our Lord. But it starts with being a priest unto him in worship. We worship him in our priestly capacity, but we execute his written judgment as it is in heaven, so on the earth, by the sword that comes out of our mouth. So let our mouth not bring anything negative on us. Let us not empower the enemy by speaking the things which we do not want. The moment I start telling everybody, you know, I've been so under attack, I've been so harassed by the enemy, what am I doing? I am empowering the enemy. I'm empowering him by my own words, but if my, because my eyes are on him. But when I shift my gaze into the glory, knowing where I am, with the enemy under my feet, it's a whole different scenery. And now what I see here, I see the power of God's word. I see that I am crowned in that kingly place together with Christ as his uh, executive, his kingdom, ex kingly executive, to execute his word on the earth by speaking it. Now what, when I, what happens when I speak it? The angels come in action because they don't work with the words that are negative. They only work with the word of God. So when it comes out of my mouth, there's a whole angelic company sent out to cause situations and circumstances to come in alignment so that the, that word of God can have effect. Now he says in Isaiah 55, verse 11, and this God is also talking to me about, that I have to know where to aim my arrow at, arrow of the word. If I'm just shooting at random, I'm never going to hit the bullseye. I have to be focused, determined, perseverant, um, and absolutely expecting to see that turn around. I have to expect the manifestation. Why? Because God said, if I have his word and I saw what my father is doing, that is my new picture. So the old picture has got to be eliminated in my own mind. You see, diff often the Lord spoke to me about that too, about so, two, three years ago. He really started talking about what do you carry in your consciousness. If I carry in my consciousness the trauma, 
of the negativity. I'm going to react out of it. I'm going to have emotions out of it. I'm going to have attitudes and behavior patterns. But above all, my mind is in the wrong place. And it says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Everything is determined by the mindset. That's why the word of God says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So when today we get renewed and we say, no, no longer am I empowering the enemy by where I look and what I see and what I carry in my consciousness. I'm going to turn that around there. There, I have the responsibility to say, no, no longer. I rule and reign over you, enemy, because I'm seated together with Christ in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father, far above all principalities and powers and dominions and names, whatever the name is. So you can rise up and say, sickness, you leave. All consciousness of sickness, leave in the name of Jesus. You take your authority and you command the enemy to back off from you. And you don't have any agreement with sickness anymore. So what's your mind? What am I thinking? Oh, I'm so sick. I feel so bad. You can't do that and expect victory. You have to look beyond at the outcome of his word. I can testify of this and I will always do it. That when I had cancer and I was in the hospital and I was in a very bad state, according to the doctor. But my, by the grace of God, I had one picture before my, my eyes. I'm going to preach the gospel again. I saw myself behind the pulpit and I saw myself walking on the beach because that's my favorite place to have communion with the Lord. And all that was in my mind is I am healed by his stripes. And that's all that came out of my mouth. The whole story between my, the, the state I was in and how I was going to get to the end was I never thought of it. I didn't try and think how am I going to reach that point. I saw the end result. I spoke it, I worshipped God, I praised Him, I called it forth, and that invaded my whole consciousness. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So by God's grace and glory, He gave me complete victory and freedom of cancer. There's not a sign of it, and it's been um, almost yeah, 18 years. And I know I am healed. Because of the blood of Jesus. People, I just want to encourage you to know that through the blood of Jesus, every victory was ours. Is ours. Every victory. Doesn't matter what your situation is. He became poor so that we can be rich. Poverty is not part of my inheritance. My inheritance, my portion is the Lord and when you seek the kingdom of God all else shall be added unto you so then the reality comes that in Christ I have no need I have no want because he's my shepherd I shall not want he leads me and shows me and talks to me communes with me and I sit at his table in the presence of my enemy and he can do nothing about it and my cup runs over because that is where your empowerment is is in the word of god i want to encourage you to pursue him more than you have ever done don't let anything steal <laughs> that place of intimacy with the lord where you see what the father's doing where you hear his voice and your whole day is set according to that word. And tomorrow I get fresh manner, fresh empowering, sometimes two, three times a day, sometimes for hours on end. Pursue him. He's drawing with, a, with the cords of love. He's drawing his children into deeper places in the glory so that they can come into the 
the fullness of our destiny to represent the Christ, to be a revelation of the Christ through his word and through what you experience with him so that heaven can come to earth through you. God bless you.